a condition which has 100% mortality that is everybody is going to die if not treated if you put a shunt in this there is a very high chance of intraventricular bleeding vein of gallon malformation let's look at what this condition is but obviously before going into vein of gallon malformation an important thing that we need to understand is what is vein of gallon so when we talk about any vein there are a few things which we need to understand about its anatomy how is it formed where does it drain where is it located so how is vein of gallon formed on the roof of the third ventricle we have a pair of veins going posteriorly this is the pair of internal cerebral veins now a pair of internal cerebral veins will join with a pair of basal vein of rosenthal and thus the great vein of gallen is formed the name is given after this physician and philosopher so the next question is this vein of gallen where does this drain or where does it end so as the vein of gallen is formed and as it drains as it travels posteriorly it joins with the inferior sagittal sinus and then together it forms a straight sinus which goes posteriorly along the tentorium to reach the torcula so this is how vein of gallen is formed and then this is where it drains coming to its anatomical location it is located uh, in such a way that superiorly there is the posterior most part of the corpus callosum that is the splenium of the corpus callosum inferiorly there is the quadrigeminal cistern also precentral cerebellar vein anteriorly there is the pineal gland habenula and posterior commissure posteriorly obviously it is forming into the straight sinus so straight sinus is posterior to it and on the two sides there is the tentorium it develops in utero from its precursor that is the median prosecumphalic vein now this term is important in vein of gallen malformation so now that we have seen what vein of gallen is how is it formed where it drains what is its anatomical location let's directly go into vein of gallen malformation and what happens over there so as i told you in utero it is the median prosecumphalic vein which drains a lot of the important areas of the brain but there are obviously a lot of arteries which are supposed to supply blood to a lot of important areas they are the choroidal arteries thalamo perforating arteries pericallosal arteries etc so sometimes there can be an abnormal communication between these arteries and the median prosecumphalic vein so as a result what happens there is shunting of blood from the arteries to the veins and this is how vein of gallen malformation happens there are different classification systems for vein of gallen malformation of eogm most commonly used is the lasonius classification it has two types the choroidal type and the mural type in choroidal type it is predominantly these anterior choroidal arteries uh, which uh, are communicating to the median prosecumphalic vein and uh, in short let me tell you this is the worst of the two types and is usually presented early whereas the mural type mainly involves the posterior uh, choroidal arteries and they are more of a fistula type and uh, usually presented a bit later and easier to treat how do they present so what exactly is the problem the problem is that the oxygenated blood from the arteries is directly shunted to the venous system without having an intervening capillaries so this is basically an arteriovenous shunting so as a result all the blood that is pumped by the heart is not doing its actual work that is almost 80% of the oxygenated blood is wasted as it is shunted to these veins and it comes back to the heart so this is how there is a left to to right shunting so as a result what happens the heart has to pump more and more blood so that so this is the reason why there is high output cardiac failure the child may have hydrops fetalis or fetal cardiomegaly 
so we know the problem is because of left to right shunting that is most of the blood that is pumped out of the heart is getting wasted that is it is directly going to the veins without going into the capillaries where oxygenation uh, gaseous exchange can take place so they present in the form of cardiac failure now how do we diagnose it antenatally it can be diagnosed even with ultrasound where prominent dilated and echoic structure can be seen apart from that obviously having cardiac failure in the initial days of life is also suggestive of eogm apart from that the definitive diagnosis can be done with various other radiological modalities like a ct scan uh, ct angio though not very specific because uh, there is immediate running of the contrast uh, mri mr angio but the gold standard is digital subtraction angiogram a condition which has 100% mortality that is everybody is going to die if not treated and prior to the endovascular uh, era there used to be 90% mortality even with attempted surgical closure so as bad as it can be but after advances in the endovascular treatment the results have been fairly better so what is done is embolization of these fistulas are done either through the artery or through the veins through the torcula the prognosis is good in case of a mural type of eogm which is relatively easier to treat compared to the choroidal type of eogm and it is also interesting to note that the choroidal type of eogm usually presents earlier compared to the mural type of eogm if the heart failure is not very significant it is better to wait up to about 6 months before doing the procedure however if the cardiac failure is severe then obviously we are forced to treat it even before the child attains 6 months now what can be the other problem with eogm so as you can imagine the venous pressure is very high all the arterial blood is flowing through the vein of gallen then to the straight sinus torcula sigmoid sinus and out so as a result the venous pressure is very high so let's come to the ventricular system what happens to the csf which was produced by the choroid plexus where does it have to go where does it get absorbed finally it gets absorbed in the choroidal villi at the sinus right so it has to go back to the venous sinus but if the venous pressure is high this reabsorption of csf gets affected so as a result of higher venous pressure the child develops hydrocephalus shunting is usually not advised because if you put a shunt in this there is a very high chance of intraventricular bleeding because of the elevated venous pressure so overall in brief what is vein of gallen it is basically a large vein which drains a lot of important areas of the brain what happens in vein of gallen malformation there is an abnormal communication between the arteries and the precursor of the vein of gallen that is a median prosencephalic vein in utero stage so as a result all the arterial blood gets into this so called vein of gallen and there is artery to venous shunting so more and more blood has to be pumped by the heart so that rest of the body can get some amount of oxygenated blood what happens this results in high output cardiac failure how do we treat this condition this has to be treated by endovascular procedure that is embolization using glues and coils it can be done either through the arteries or through the veins how is the prognosis well previously the prognosis was very bad nowadays with the advances in the endovascular treatment the prognosis is fairly okay especially if the cardiac failure is not very significant to present with so these are a few points about the vein of gallen malformation i i hope you found this video informative if so make sure you give a thumbs up so that youtube baba becomes happy and subscribe to this channel for more such informative videos